ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Great. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, before I start off, uh, since I've noticed the culture here, I start off with questions. So how many here have been uh, either a victim of uh, cybercrime as an individual or a corporate? Wow, okay. Oh, okay, good hands. So this is the right discussion. And uh, when you are talking about uh, cyber insurance, we have to discuss about cybercrime and the essence of cybersecurity. And um, I'll, I'll try to demystify both uh, cyber insurance as well as cyber security. And it's interesting also when I was sitting here listening through the conversations from the previous presenters, everyone is focusing on the opportunity available in technology. But there's also another opportunity that we also need to focus, which is the technology risk. And um, as the moderator was saying, putting it right that insurance needs to move from being a compensating uh, uh, industry to, a more, to being more a preventive uh, business and providing that risk management for organizations. So, um, basic starting off with the current status of affairs. I think every other day you're reading uh, the newspaper, watching TV, there's always an incident of a cyber crime, of an organization losing money, or people being arrested because they are part of uh, uh, cyber uh, criminal activities. Um, most recent is early on this month, uh, those of us in Kenya, you remember government websites were hacked by some group, uh, defaced, just basically changing the content of the website. And that's just the government websites. Think of it more from a corporate perspective. Um, as part of what we do, we provide security assessment and assurance to organizations. And I'll tell you that the financial sector is suffering because of cybercrime. And you can guess obvious why. They have the money, the cyber criminal is after that money. So, again, most organizations are spending too much and getting little from cyber uh, security investment. And why is this the case? Technology keeps on changing. So also the adversaries, or who we all call the hackers, are also advancing in terms of their game. So today as an organization, uh, you invest in a cyber security solution. Uh, the vendor promises you, this gives you 100% security assurance on your, uh, on your systems. But unfortunately, the attacker is always a step ahead of that vendor. So you buy this solution. Um, next year again, uh, you need to put another budget to improve on your security. So it's a challenge for organizations. And uh, the most recent uh, report provided in terms of uh, the cost of cybercrime uh, to Kenya, at least of, as of 2018, was about $259 million. Uh, Try and imagine what that uh, money would have done to this economy if it wasn't lost through cybercrime. And my personal view is that this number is actually uh, underestimated. Because most of the time, we don't have the culture of reporting these incidents. Um, the banking industry, yes, has set up its own mechanism for uh, banks to, to report when an incident occurs. Uh, it may not go into details of how much they have lost, but yes, there is some mechanism around it. Now, that's banks only. Think about circles. Think about even you, insurance business. You're also losing money in terms of, uh, I mean, losing money in terms from uh, cyber-related activities. Think of also of SMEs, the small in individual who's running a business somewhere. I have a very interesting case that happened uh, early on this year. A lady who runs um, um, a salon in Thika is hit by a ransomware. A ransomware is basically a malware that infects your systems and they demand that you pay a ransom. Think of it, this is a salon. She has about six or seven computers. Then all of a sudden, one morning, she can't uh, provide services to a customer because of a cyber-related uh, risk. This is a potential customer for the insurance business. So we live in a world of West in terms of cyber threat. It's always a chase against the attacker and the business is trying to catch up with that. Now, it becomes very interesting because um, the gangs, the criminal gangs, of course, they are organized uh, groups, uh, the famous ones being Anonymous and a few others. Even in our own country here, there are some organized uh, criminal gangs who are just running syndicates within the cyber uh, crime space. And it becomes more complicated when you get to a level where states are actually sponsoring this. You might be very aware about the, you know, the famous American, Russian, Chinese war. Uh, we actually say that the next world war will not be fought with guns, uh, it's just data. 
because today if I have data about your country or your organization, I'm more empowered than even the person who has a gun. Because with your information, I can do anything. With a gun, the best thing I think I can do is just kill you. That's it. So cyber attacks are just a, a soft and a nuclear weapon uh, for organizations as well as governments. So it's interesting to note that um, uh, Warren Buffett actually once put it out that that cybercrime is one of the uh, hugest problems with mankind today. And I totally agree with him. So let's think of the aftermath of uh, uh, a cyber attack. And as we come closer now to insurance and the opportunities available for the insurance space. So today an organization is hit by uh, a, a cyber uh, threat. So one, probably data will be lost in terms of the data could be exposed, and I think I liked uh, the question asked earlier about uh, uh, data privacy and uh, you know, uh, uh, data protection provided by the solutions you are giving to customers. Um, business interruption, which is very interesting. Because today, if you are not able to provide services uh, to your customers using your solutions, then you're not in business. Now, the cost of recovering after that incident becomes also very hefty. And Sometimes people only focus on the cost, probably in terms of the financial loss that you've gone through after the incident. But people forget that there is the cost of also of recovery from the incidents. In the essence, uh, or rather in the sense of, uh, you need somebody to come in and carry out a forensic investigation, for example. Um, as part of the, uh, the attack, you might need to upgrade your system, so you might need also a vendor to come in and provide that service. Those are costs that you're not putting in your budget. You are reacting to this uh, incident and this is something that has to be factored into your into, um, I mean into your budget now that's one element let's think of also the revenue that you lose in terms of a business um, if you look at East Africa there are a lot of M and A's that are happening try and imagine today if there's a merger and acquisition that is taking place uh, the negotiations are still ongoing then a cyber incident occurs and one of the um, uh, one of the business, their customers' data or some of their confidential information is leaked out. What would happen to that process? Be thinking about that. Then again, of course, when you are compromised as a business, you need to communicate to the regulator, you need to communicate to your customers. There's a cost element to all this. And um, in addition to that, uh, your customers could also decide to sue you. They have a right to, you have a right, you actually, uh, they have a right for you to protect their information. So if you breach that, the customer has a right to go and uh, uh, sue you. The top three threats for, uh, uh, for a business globally. So number one, the top threat is business interruption. And somebody try and guess, which is the leading cause of business interruption for a business? Anyone? Exactly. Exactly. That tells you why cyber incident is also the number two. And you notice uh, business interruption and cyber attacks do tie in terms of the percentages uh, by the organizations that were uh, interviewed during that uh, assessment. Now, what I find very profounding is that as a business, you're more likely to, uh, to be faced by either cyber incident or a business interruption rather than natural calamities that we don't even have control. That tells you also as an insurance uh, uh, industry which areas you need now to start focusing on in terms of what products you're offering to, uh, to the businesses. Now let's come back to what role does insurance do? And uh, starting off from where we started, we need to change from being a compensating business to a risk preventing business. So today think of a bank. Um, they have systems, uh, uh, they are, you know, they are providing you with the typical uh, banking services, either online, through mobile. Uh, you can also go to the to the to the to the uh, to the branch and you know interact and uh, carry out your transactions. Now, they have put in their security measures to protect your money, your data, and all. Now, where does insurance comes comes in in this uh, perspective? So today, a bank will put in measures, of course, to prove to protect, uh, of course, your funds as well as data that you've provided to them. Insurance needs to start 
looking at seeing how they can turn to be a cyber risk management uh, profile for that entity, for example, if it's a bank. So how do I assist this bank uh, minimize their risks in terms of cyber risk? I'm providing them still a policy on cyber insurance, but I'm thinking beyond the policy. So what value add am I bringing on board to this customer of mine? Am I providing them with solutions uh, that can help them mitigate their risks? Am I creating awareness, not only to their board, but also to their staff members on how best they can reduce their risks? The good, the opportunity there is that, well, of course, you're selling them the policy. Secondly, you're also part of their risk consulting team. So you are in business with this organization, not today, not tomorrow, you are, it's a continuous entity. Now, secondly, you also want to improve uh, how the, the institution or the organization makes their investments in terms of cybersecurity. Now, as part of the cyber insurance, um, you know, uh, underwriting process, you'll need to quantify risks for this organization. It's a complex business of uh, quantifying cyber risks due to the nature of risks. We'll discuss that uh, in a brief. But as part of that quantification uh, process, which we call Cyber uh, Value at Risk or CYVA, you'll be able to advise the organization based on the value of at risk that, this organization, that your organization is at, you need to put XYZ uh, uh, investment in terms of your cyber security. Again, you've still provided the, the coverage, but you're also bringing in some value add. So the insurance industry needs to change, not just being providing the coverage, but you're providing value add as part of the entire package. And as well as part of that, because it's a continuous process, uh, we always say that there is no organization that can claim that is 100% secure. That's just a fallacy. In fact, we actually say there are two types of organization those that have been hacked and those that don't know that they have been hacked and the majority are in the latter group so how do you promote cyber hygiene for the uh, businesses that you've provided uh, 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 the coverage so it's those continuous assessments are you engaging the the organization in terms of um, are they addressing the uh, their risks do they know how well their systems are patched in terms of security updates are you providing very basic security awareness for their staff because we always say that the human is the weakest point. It's that user who will click on that email link that will download a malware that infects the entire organization. So if that single individual is empowered, we'll uh, mitigate that risk. Now, going beyond cybersecurity, now we are talking of, because organizations have realized um, we can't, I mean, we can't run away from cybersecurity or cyber uh, uh, crime for that matter. So we know at some point we'll be hit. So what do we do? We want to ensure that we are in a position to provide uh, business services despite a cyber incident or despite a cyber attack. And that's what we are referring to as cyber resilience. So how do you provide that cyber resilience to the organization? Not just an issue of compensating them when an incident occurs, but goes beyond to when that incident occurs, what other value-add services are you offering? Are you providing incident response to these uh, clients who've taken up this product? Beyond that, they also need PR services. If today one of our local banks, uh, tell, we get to, to know that they have been compromised, we need somebody to come out here and tell us, hey, wait a minute, yes, we acknowledge an incident occurs, but things are under control. Create that confidence to the end consumer. So what are the key factors that are driving uh, growth of cyber insurance? Um, and as we talk about cyber insurance, it's also, I think, important also just to break down this terminology of cyber insurance. So it's basically a cover, a cover that provides uh, financial protection from uh, uh, financial losses emanating from uh, cyber-related risks. So what's driving this business of uh, cyber insurance? One, of course, you can't run away from the increase of cybercrime and uh, cyber-related risks. Uh, secondly, of course, emergence of technologies. Uh, we are talking of, you know, IoTs, artificial intelligence. So the more we advance in terms of technology, as I said earlier, the more also the risk keep on also growing and advancing. So the two go in, hand in hand. Again, government regulations. Um, uh, the Central Bank of Kenya passed some uh, cybersecurity guidelines for the uh, member banks. 
and one of the one of the guidelines is that they propose to the banks to take up cyber insurance as a risk transfer mechanism. That's just uh, CBK. Uh, circles also have a similar uh, uh, guideline, not very uh, related towards that, but there is also that element that you need to consider how you can transfer this risk uh, to an insurer. That's an opportunity for the insurance business. Uh, of interest also is the widening gap. More people are getting aware about cyber insurance and cyber crime and the impact it has to the business. So they're also looking up to uh, taking up cyber insurance as a product. <coughs> of interest also, cyber security is now a boardroom discussion. That's a very interesting conversation. Because before cyber security used to be an IT conversation, uh, discussions that is happening in the server room. Now that conversation moved to uh, the board. And when that happens, that means that as a business, uh, or as an institution, you've realized that this is a risk that we can't just let it down to an IT level. We need to be discussing it at the board. Um, we always, as part of our engagement, we're always very happy whenever we carry out an assessment and we have to present the outcome to the board members. Because these are the people who are responsible as part of their fiduciary uh, duties to manage the risks of the organization. So how is the market growing? Globally, it's uh, expected to hit uh, $22.8 billion by 2024. Um, when you look at it, come back to Africa, um, still a growing market. Um, South Africa is, of course, leading in terms of uh, uh, the market space. Kenya, we are picking up, and again, thanks to the guidelines from uh, uh, the regulators, as well as that awakening up of businesses that this is a risk and we need to deal with it. So there's a huge opportunity in cyber, uh, cyber insurance, and the insurance business also need to start seeing the potential in it and start offering solutions that address uh, that risk in the market. In addition to that, organizations are moving from cyber security to cyber resilience, as I had mentioned. So I want, as a business, I want to be assured that despite that attack, I'm still able to offer business uh, to my uh, clientele. And in addition to that, also regulations that are being passed. Uh, Europe passed the General Data Privacy Regulation uh, that has very uh, hefty penalties. And again, despite being a European uh, uh, regulation, it affects even business here in Kenya. In addition to that, also countries, Nigeria, South Africa, Rwanda, even Kenya, Uganda, there are a lot of push for data privacy and uh, regulations uh, around the same space. And of course, wherever there is a, such a regulation, there are of course penalties. That means another opportunity for somebody to transfer that risk uh, to somebody who can be able to compensate in case uh, there's a data leakage or uh, a, a cyber incident. So despite it sounding all rosy, there are quite a number of challenges. And the first one, of course, being cyber risk is so ambiguous uh, in the sense of, um, it's one, it's unique in its nature. Today we can do an assessment for an organization and tell them, this is, uh, these are your vulnerabilities or your loopholes in your system. If you fix this, you are sorted. There are things that we call zero day. Zero day kind of attacks is, it's, a, it's an attack that is only known by the uh, uh, creator of that attack. So, or what we call unknown unknowns. So there are things that we don't know that we don't know. And unfortunately, that's how cyber risk is. So how do, you, how do you ensure such a risk? Something to think about. In addition to that, there's also accumulation of risk. Uh, and you look at it in two scenarios. One, you could offer a cyber insurance uh, coverage to an organization and an incident occurs that, on, that affects other policies. So take for example, you've offered the same coverage to a uh, gas manufacturing you know, in the, uh, business. A malware uh, attacks their automation systems that leads to an explosion in that plant. So property is destroyed. In addition to that, probably some, there are some fatalities. So does your cyber insurance also coverage also provide uh, protection and uh, compensation for the other two. That's one scenario. Another scenario, you've provided uh, cyber insurance to a service provider. 
And I'll give you a classic example that happened uh, last year, October, November. So uh, a, provider, um, a service provider provides a mobile solution to circles in Kenya. 40 circles were impacted by an incident that occurs. Now, the, the, the attack, of course, was from the system provided by the service provider. Now, assume you had provided a coverage to this uh, service provider. Does that coverage extend to their 40 customers and as well as the other customers, now the members of the circles, from uh, that coverage? So that's something also very interesting to uh, ponder and think about. Again, also lack of awareness in terms of uh, the people who are making decisions uh, don't, are not empowered to understand what's the value of cyber insurance. Um, an interesting scenario, um, I once engaged somebody within our cyber security space on cyber insurance and uh, the individual you know, said, there's no market for cyber insurance in Kenya, I mean, I really can't see it. Now, the individual went to work for a bank and the bank at some point requested him being the head of IT security to go and source for cyber insurance coverage. So you see, at, he, at, at the level he was at, as the head of security, for him he didn't see the point of cyber insurance. But the board can see the value of cyber insurance. And, there's, and think of it, this is just one of the bank. Do you think this conversation is also in the other businesses, even in your own insurance uh, businesses? How many of your insurance uh, businesses are also thinking of even selling cyber insurance as a product? And of course, the most interesting thing, uh, attacks, cyber attacks, don't occur on the day you feel the pain. An incident occurs, you actually uh, realize an incident occurs probably six, seven months down the line. In fact, on an average, we say it takes about 191 days to detect a cyber incident. So if you provided uh, coverage uh, for, an, for, an, for such an institution that has faced an attack and they raise that claim, does the claim start off from the day they raise the claim? What happens about the other 190 days uh, when the incident started, uh, when the incident uh, was occurring? Is that part, will that claim uh, address the losses before uh, they were 90 days. Again, also, uh, the message should go out that cyber insurance does not replace cyber security. The basics of cyber security in an organization must be kept in place. Cyber insurance is just, again, coming on on board to bring in that value, uh, to provide that protection from financial loss in case of a cyber attack. So what opportunities are there for the cyber insurance space? As I keep saying that cyber insur insurance companies need to change from the business of compensating to the business of providing risk uh, prevention. So before the breach occurs, what value can you give to the customer as you are undergoing through the underwriting process? Provide security awareness to their staff, the bare minimums. Do a simple assessment of this organization. Advise them, these are the risks that you need to close down even before you take up the coverage. Because again, you also don't want to take up a client who already has too many issues. So you also want to reduce their risk before you bring them on board. Now, the breach occurs. What value add are you giving the customer? Do you provide incident response to this customer? Are you able to ask, uh, enable them to return back to business and assure them of cyber uh, resilience? In addition to that, have you worked, are you in partnerships with other organizations, for example, a PR and a communication firm that will be able to clear and provide that message out there that things are in order, things are in control? Again, the same partnerships goes beyond just with PR. Um, Insurance business um, may not have that capacity in terms of cybersecurity. So it's an opportunity to partner with cybersecurity providers who will be able to provide the risk assessment, the incident response, forensic investigation uh, for your customers. And that's actually something that we do for uh, an, a reinsurer. And something of very interest and uh, something to think of. Could the premiums be, be incentives? Think of it this way. Today we've provided uh, a coverage for a business. Next year they want to renew that coverage. 
what incentives can we give them in terms of have, have we seen that they have been reducing their cyber risks so that we encourage them to buy more uh, 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 coverage. And that of course attracts other customers that the more you re reduce your risk, the more you become um, the more you become more attractive to me as the insurer to offer you this service. As I close down, I want you to think about something. That in the near future, and in the very, very near future, organization will not just be ranked by their financial performance, but as well as their cyber resilience. Thank you.